happen. Yeah, just going crazy. <laughs> so it's almost constant. All right, so here is my peristaltic pump. This is based off of the Great Scott design. Uh, I had to change a couple of things, um, and I wanted to specify a few things. You know, if you're going to build it yourself, there were a lot of questions that I had in the building process. It ended up taking me longer than I'd care to admit to figure everything out. So hopefully I can help you avoid those mistakes. Um, I finally got it working. So I have a 12 volt, 2 amp DC power supply. I'm going to plug that in. Okay, so you can see the Arduino turned on, the pump turned on. And we have this little potentiometer here, and as I spin it, you can see the motor goes faster or goes slower. So depending on your application, you know, you may want that range of speed to be different. Um, and there's some variables in the code that you can change really easily to change the uh, the range of speed that you have. Um, I actually want to go really slow on mine, but a lot of people probably want a, a, a pretty fast moving pump. Um, so I'm just gonna, actually, let me show you the wiring diagram that I drew up. Um, so if you want to make exactly this, you know, you can just pause the video here and look at that. But basically what we have is an Arduino and a little motor controller uh, and then we have a potentiometer, a voltage regulator circuit back there. You can see that. Um, we have a capacitor to smooth out the, the voltage at the motor controller. And then, of course, we have the stepper motor. And then in the final circuit, I'm going to add this little switch in. Um, and I'll add all of the parts that I used in the description below so that you can build exactly this for yourself. This is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, by the way. Again, everything is in that wiring diagram. Um, I made a cute little box for it. So this is the lid. The motor will go in there. You can see the motor is diagonal to the square of the, the 3D printed part. This um, motor housing is printed in white ABS at 80% infill. And this stuff is really, really, really sturdy. Um, you know, you can probably get away with 60% maybe even 40%. I would do 60 or 80% just to make sure it's stable. Still waiting on the silicon hose to come in, by the way. Uh, that's why I don't have it pumping anything right now, um, but hopefully soon I will. So yeah, in the description, you can also find the, uh, the Thingiverse file for the box that I made and also Great Scott's um, instructable of how to make this peristaltic pump, which is where I got most of my information from. And then you're ready for this. Here's the box. There he is. Isn't he adorable? Okay, so right here, that's where the button's going to go. Hopefully it fits. Right there, that's where the potentiometer is going to go. And then in the back, there's a little hole for the uh, wire, for the power cable. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend prototyping this on a breadboard because um, it took me a long time to figure everything out, make sure everything was working perfectly. The Arduino requires between 3 and 5 volts, about, and the motor requires between 8 and 45 volts, the motor and the motor controller. So originally I was using a 5-volt power supply. That doesn't cut it. So what I did was I have a 12-volt power supply now on this rail. So this rail is 12 volts here. Um, and then, of course, I have this voltage regulator, like I pointed out earlier. This voltage regulator circuit is really simple, and that steps the voltage down to be 5 volts on this rail to run the Arduino off of. So in the wiring diagram that I showed earlier, some of the connections are 5 volts, some of them are 12 volts. Uh, just make sure you get those right. Um, and some of the grounds are 12 volts, and some of the grounds, most of the grounds are 5 volts. Um, but the ones that are 12 volts, I labeled them. Um, so the motor controller here, um, you know, if you follow the wiring diagram, you'll, you'll get it right. But this side, these are the four connections that go to the motor, um, as well. So we have positive negative 12 volts first, and then we have the four motor wires. Let's see if I can get in there better. 
So yellow is the positive 12 volt, brown is the negative 12 volt, and then we have our four motor wires. So the only thing that matters with the motor wires is the pairing of them. So as long as the gray is with green and red is with blue, then it's fine. Um, and the way you figure out what pairs there are, you can look up data sheets, but sometimes they're wrong. Um, the way you figure it out is you connect, for example, gray to green. And if you try to spin the motor by hand, you know, with everything off, if you try to spin the motor by hand, you'll find the motor will be harder to spin. So that's how you know it's a pair. If you connect two of the wires and you try to spin it, and it's just as easy to spin as if they're not connected, then that's not a pair. Um, so that's another thing that I learned in this project. Um, and then on this side, you have uh, several connections to the digital pins on the Arduino. Um, and then our analog, our only analog pin is going to our potentiometer to control the speed of the motor. And that's all in the code provided by Great Scott. Um, I'll probably link his video as well in the description. It's pretty good, but it doesn't go into detail of how to actually build this circuit. That's why I wanted to make this video. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to, you know, go from the prototype stage to the, to the draft stage and put everything in the box, um, put it all together, wire it all together, and I'll be back in a minute and hopefully it's working well. All right, what up? I got it all wired up, finally. Uh, it's not all soldered together yet. It looks like an absolute mess, but if we turn on Lil Pump, he spins. Here is the most beautiful creature I've ever seen. You ready? There he goes. It's beautiful. All right, so I finally got everything working. You can see it moving. This is on the lowest setting that I have it at right now. It's pumping from here. And you can see it in there doing about one drop every pump rotation. <laughs> it didn't do that one. So I wanted to demonstrate something called pump head, or sometimes it's just called <laughs> <laughs> it's just called head. Um, basically, the idea that uh, the the height of the column of water um, plays an effect in the in the pressure in the system. So, uh, in this system, we have the height of this liquid level here, um, and then the height of this liquid level up here. So it starts from this height, and it ends at this height, and then. Another uh, pressure determining factor is this pump here. So the ability of this pump to rotate and push the fluid up. Um, and, you know, if you're doing a, a, a mathematical model of this, you would probably assume that this is constant, a constant pressure pump. But as you can definitely see, it's sort of fluctuating a little bit. What I want to demonstrate is that if I raise the fluid level, it won't be able to pump. If I put the fluid level much lower, now we're going maybe five or six drops. You know, if I made them level, then the only influence would be the, the pump. But if I make it higher, then the pump has to overcome the hydrostatic pressure is what it's called. You know, so if the end tube was lower, then I wouldn't be able to go much lower than 10 mils per minute. But if it's higher, then I can go lower than 10 mils per minute. So I think this pump is a success for me. I'm gonna crank it up just so you guys can see what it can do. And again, the screws are a little loose right now, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. But yeah, just going crazy. So it's almost constant. Yeah, there's a pump lock up right there when it goes too fast. So yeah, overall works pretty good. It does what I want it to do. So I'm happy. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, tell me everything I did wrong in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like if you liked the video and subscribe if you want more crap like this. I'll see you.